Hey everybody, this is example number 13 for steel design for tension members. The problem statement that we have is for member AB in the figure below, we need to determine the required threaded rod size. If the material is A36 steel, the load at joint B is a service live load and the weight of member CB it can be considered negligible. So here's our figure and we have a 20 kip live load applied at joint B and BC the weight is negligible and we need to find the threaded rod size for AB and the vertical distance from A to C is 9 feet and the horizontal distance from B to C is 15 feet. Before we proceed to the solution I just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. I have used Bentley software and I can say that the software was very easy to use and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website, it's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as well as their various YouTube channels. So please check them out. And now coming back to our threaded rod problem. So we're going to use the LRFD approach first. So we need to calculate the factored load based on ASCE 7 load combinations. And this is the governing load combination. It's load combination number two. And it's going to be equal to 1.2 times dead load plus 1.6 times live load. So since we don't have a dead load, we just have a live load of 20 kips. It's going to be 1.6 times 20 kips equals 32 kips. So the next step is to find the tensile load in member AB, which is a member we're designing for. So to do that, we're going to isolate joint B and perform the method of joints on it. So here is our joint B. And if we sum the forces in the vertical direction, we find that uh, the force in AB, FAB times sine of 30.96 degrees minus P sub U, the, the, factored, the factored live load. So we just rearrange this equation and we find that uh, the force in AB, the tensile load in AB is equal to 32, is equal to the factored live load divided by sine of 30.96 degrees, and that's going to be equal to 62.2 kips. So this is our design tensile loading. This is what we need to design for. Now we're going to calculate the required area per AISC equation J3.1, and it's going to be equal to the design tensile design load divided by the resistance factor and then times FNT. And FNT is equal to, which is a nominal tensile stress, is equal to 0 0.75 times the ultimate tensile strength per AISC table J3.2 in the 13th edition. And so we plug in the numbers. Uh, so our factor tensile loading we found was our design tensile loading was 62.2 kips divided by 0 0.75 times 0 0.75 times 58 and maybe I didn't mention this earlier but A36 steel the yield is 36 KSI and the ultimate strength is 58 KSI so our required uh, cross-sectional area of our rod is equal to 1.91 inches squared and that's equal to pi d squared over 4. Now we rearrange this equation to solve for d and d is equal to 4 times 
the uh, d is equal to the square root of 4 times the cross-sectional area divided by pi. So the minimum required diameter is equal to 1.56 inches. So for design purposes, we can say we'll use a 1 and 5 eighths inch diameter rod. That's the end of the LRFD approach. Now we're going to do the ASD approach. So again, we have to calculate the factor load. And load combination number two will, will govern based on ASCE7 load combinations. ASCE7. And that's dead load plus live load. So our dead load is we don't have a dead load. So it's just going to be equal to live load. And that's 20 kips. And now, uh, now we need to find the tensile loading in member AB again. So we already have the relationship that the tensile load in AB is equal to our factored load divided by sine of 30.96 degrees. That we already established when we were doing the LRFD approach. And the statics don't change when we change whether we're doing LRFD or ASD. The statics is, remains the same. So it's 20 kips divided by sine of 30.96 degrees. So our allowable tensile load that we need to design for is 38.88 kips. Based on this, now we can calculate the gross cross-sectional area, the required gross cross-sectional area per AISC equation J3.1. So our allowable load, uh, allowable tensile load is equal to our nominal uh, nominal load, nominal strength, divided by a safety factor. So this numerator is the nominal strength. And again, it's FNT times a cross-sectional area. And FNT, again, per AISE table J3.2, is equal to 0 0.75 times the ultimate tensile strength. And the safety factor for this limit state of for this limit state of tensile rupture is equal to 2.0. And so we just simplify this equation even more. So our allowable tensile loading uh, is equal to 0 0.375 times the ultimate tensile strength times a cross-sectional area. And now we just rearrange this equation and solve for AB. And AB is equal to 1.79 inches squared. We set it equal to pi d squared over 4. And d, the minimum required diameter, is 1.51 inches. And for design purposes, we'll say we'll use a 1 and 5 eighths inch diameter rod. So this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, like the Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash engineering examples. And also, please visit our website. It's, uh, it's engineeringexamples.net. And sign up for our uh, email list where you can stay up to date on the newest content that we'll that we are producing. See you guys in the next video. Thanks.